What's up everybody, I'm Matt Brody and today we're gonna do a little work on Sue, my Jurassic Park Jeep. What we're gonna do is try to tackle the sound. One of the things that I noticed was the sound from the sound bars was very crackly and that indicated to me that the speakers in the sound bar were going bad or were already bad. So my goal today is to change out the speakers in the sound bar and then maybe even change out the radio. I got uh, a friend of mine that you saw from the Overland video, Kevin, gave me a stock YJ radio so I can go back to the original factory look. Just another thing that helps with the overall authenticity of the Jeep. We've talked about wanting to do that, so I'm hoping I can do that. Now here's the thing to know, is that this kind of stuff is not stuff I'm used to doing. I don't know how to do this stuff. Working on cars is still very new to me, but that is one of the reasons that I got this kind of Jeep was that it's a vehicle I could learn to work on cars with. So I'm going to do my absolute best, not so much as a tutorial, uh, but you get to follow along, learn with me, um, probably watch me make some mistakes. You can leave comments down below what I should have done, what I did right, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to attempt to replace the speakers in the soundbar, and I've never done this kind of thing before. So I took the cover off of the soundbar and right away I can tell I was right. This is what happened. This is all the foam um, that went around the speaker that goes here. It has all dry rotted and just fallen onto the speaker grill. So yeah, this speaker totally trashed. So another big part of why I want to do this, even though I'm not comfortable with it, is to hopefully inspire you. Uh, this kind of stuff is out of my wheelhouse, it's out of my comfort zone. Car stuff in general, out of my wheelhouse, out of my comfort zone. But the goal is to hopefully figure out how to tackle it myself to learn and maybe inspire you to do the same thing. So if this inspires you, I uh, that's really the goal here. So I hope this does. So this is the old speaker. And these are the new speakers that I bought. Uh, they're made by Kicker. I searched Amazon and found what I thought would be a good pair of 4x4 four four speakers. 4x4 four four in this case meaning 4 inch by 4 inch, so they're square. So these speakers came with their own grill, which is great. However, the grill that I need to maintain the right look for the sound bar is actually square. So my, yep, my, my square ones will work just fine on that. You can see the holes all line up, so I should be able to use the original square ones again, so I won't need these but just take a look at the difference in the speaker quality this is the new one you can see um, looks like plastic and metal components versus cardboard and foam maybe these should sound significantly better than this ever did now here's where i'm running into my first sort of issue is that this is a, a specific connector for the sound bar and this just has these connectors here. So I think my plan is I'm going to actually cut off the connector from the old speaker and wire it in directly to the new speaker and its uh, connectors there. Here's what's a little bit interesting and I called my brother because I was a little confused. The cables that I've got, the old wire is an all black wire and then a gray and black wire. And the new wires are an all gray wire and a gray and black wire. And in my head, the thing was to connect the two wires that were gray and black to gray and black and then the other wires. But the way apparently this actually works is that the black wire designates the ground. You can see that the original connector has a solid black wire and then a half black and half gray wire. The new connector has a solid gray wire and a half gray kind of black stripe wire. And basically that black stripe indicates the ground on the new wire and the solid black indicates the ground on the old wire and that's why I have to connect them that way. Okay, so now that's connected and this should connect into a speaker like so. 
All right, so here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna plug this in, try to screw it all back together, and we'll test it. And if it all works, we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, it's, uh, it's back up there. So I'm gonna crank on the car and see if I hear uh, any music. Wish me luck. All right, so I, I have music. I, I turned all the music off for this part because I didn't want to get any copyright strikes for anything that was on the radio, but uh, I could hear the music, which means I did it correctly. So all I gotta do is duplicate that side now, and I'll have brand new, much better speakers in my sound bar. And I will have done it myself. And you can do this too, because it's really not that hard. And so all I'm gonna do for this second speaker is repeat the whole process. So I'm gonna cut off these, if I can get it with this, <laughs> this magnet keeps pulling my, <laughs> there we go. This one, a lot shorter. All right, so that wasn't too bad. In fact, the hardest part of that second speaker was really just getting the holes lined up with the screws because you're kind of doing it blind because I didn't take the sound bar off. And so upside down and blind, it's a little hard to get them lined up, but eventually got it, didn't take too long. As you can see, it is really hot out. I think it's like 94 degrees outside and South Carolina humidity is like 100. It's just, it's like raining on me. I'm, I'm a mess, but it only took me like seven minutes to get that se second speaker in. So if it's something you get used to, uh, it didn't take very long. And I'm really proud of myself for getting this done. Special thanks to my brother B for uh, giving me the tips on which cables to connect because I would have done it wrong. I would have done the black and gray to black and gray thinking that's what it should have been done instead of the reverse of that. So that's what I learned out of this. Uh, so that's super helpful for the future. All right, so now that the speakers are installed, the next step is actually, well, it's technically a downgrade if you think about it. The next step is to put in this the, uh, original YJ radio that I got off of my friend Kevin from High Point Overland. So thank you, Kevin. Uh, in my last video where we did the camping trip, you saw Kevin. One of the things that we did was switch out some parts. I gave him some YJ half doors and uh, he dropped off this radio to me. I cannot stand the radio that is currently in the Jeep. It's some aftermarket thing and it glows a bunch of colors and I just, I can't stand it. And I really want to go back to a factory look to complete the, uh, the look for the actual Jurassic Park Jeep here. So I've never installed a radio. I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Definitely not a how to. Uh, we're just going to watch and see how I do on this because I'm not even sure how to get to the radio, let alone how to, I've never seen the back of it. I just, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Fingers crossed. So one thing I've learned right away is to remember to take out the CD in the radio before you take out the radio. Uh, so now I gotta make sure I do that. But I remembered before I unplugged everything. I guess is half points. I don't know. But yeah, take your stuff out before you unplug the radio. Pro tip. All right, I was able to get the radio out. It took a little bit of fiddling. I wasn't quite sure how to get the connector on the back out. Let me show you the difference in these two radios real quick. So as you can see, there's a pretty big difference in styling from the original 1992 radio to this new Pioneer that was put in. The stock radio doesn't even have a tape deck, let alone a CD player. It's just a radio. There's literally nothing else to it other than AM and FM. In the future, I still may upgrade this radio to a nicer one that incorporates Bluetooth and things like that, that, that doesn't look so modern. It looks a little bit more retro. I've got one uh, in my head that I think will work really well for this. So 
we'll see how that goes, but I may just end up with the radio, because that's all I really listen to anyway. Alright, so I've run into an issue, and the issue is that the connectors on the back of the radios don't match. Uh, they're different connectors. Now, let me show you what's going on here, because there is some hope, but there's also some finagling that has to get done. So this bundle of wires all went into the back of the radio. Now this connector back here, behind the white, this is like an adapter. So that's the original connector way back there. And I should be able to plug it in to the radio. The trouble is now there's these random wires here that these wires here that run into the new radio connector that I think bypass the old radio altogether. I talked to Beave, who's my brother, who's my go-to for all things cars that I don't know, which is an awful lot. And basically we're gonna unplug the adapter, which should let me plug the stereo directly into the Jeep. And then we're gonna figure out where sound is not coming from, which is probably the sound bar. My guess is that uh, all of that extra wiring is, is the sound bar wiring, and it was just because it's newer, was bypassed from the old connector and just put directly into the new connector is my guess. So we're gonna have to see if that's true. And then if that's the case, we're gonna have to figure out what wires to plug in where. And I am feeling in way over my head, but that's the whole point of getting this Jeep was to learn how to do this stuff, trial and error, testing my limits, learning some new things, and uh, hopefully overcoming obstacles. That's, that's what all this is all about. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I don't know how well you could see that on the camera, but the radio basically did nothing. So I don't know if the radio is bad or if there's something wrong with the wiring or there's a connection that's not quite right or I messed something up or I'm gonna have to try to figure out what the right next step is. Uh, I did see some sparks fly up. Not sure if you saw that. So there's some something weird going on there. I don't think that's supposed to happen. I might, but I don't think so, so we'll see. Uh, I think this requires another another call to Beave. So, the bad news is that I appear to be getting nothing. Kinda get some static, but I, I don't know if the radio is just toast. But I also was getting some sparks flying up whenever the back of the speaker, or the back of the radio would touch the dash frame. So, like I'm getting nothing from the, I'm getting, I'm getting static from the front speakers. Nothing from the rear. All right, well, I appreciate the help. So not all projects end up turning out the way you would hoped. So unfortunately, the radio, uh, I can get static through the speakers, but I, I don't know if the LCD screen on it is just toast or the rest of the radio is toast or whatever, but I, I can't get the radio to work. So I'm gonna have to go to a plan B for that which means I'm gonna take out this radio, I'm gonna put the radio that I had back in. Uh, anyway, that's, that's gonna be pretty much it. I'm gonna put this thing back together and uh, I'm probably gonna end up ordering a more retro style radio that has Bluetooth and things like that with it. So it won't look exactly right, but it'll look way better than the, the piece of garbage that was in here. So. Anyway, um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep watching more about what's going on with the Jurassic Jeep, uh, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be at the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, so if you're going to be there, hit me up. I'd love to see you. And uh, until next time, God bless, keep us in your prayers, and we'll talk to you soon.